Hi everyone, today we're really excited to talk to you about the new Adventure Series of Lund Boats. Hi, this is Bob from Buckeye Sports Center, and today we're going to talk a little bit about the new Adventure Series of Boats from Lund. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about, we've got three boats here, uh, 1675 Adventure, 1775 Adventure, and there's essentially a couple different variations with windshield, with single console, tiller, so we're going to talk about all that today. So before we get into the boat specifically, we want to kind of remind you and talk a little bit about the, the Lund Hall. Uh, which is going to be obviously very prevalent on the Adventure Series along with most of the other boats in their line. So the Adventure Series, just like all their other boats, is going to have a double-plated aluminum bow construction, meaning there's two sheets of aluminum on top of each other in the bow for extra amount of durability. The other thing with the IPS hull, which is kind of unique, is you have a very, very deep V in the front of the boat, helps you cut through the waves really easily. But as you go taper off toward the transom, the widest point of the boat is actually here in the middle, and the boat gets a little bit more of a mellow V as we go move back to the transom and the boat widens out quite a bit. So what that's going to create is a kind of a flatter spot from the middle of the boat back that makes it so the boat is a very, very stable fishing platform. As we look at the transom here, it's not overly crazy deep, but what that's going to do for you is it's going to make the boat more stable on the water side to side. It's going to help you get up, up on plane quicker, uh, make the boat perform a lot better and make it more stable to either fish out of or, or ride in. And going more specifically on the IPS hull, we see how it's actually 100% flat right at the keel. And what that's going to allow is water to come through the bottom of the boat and hit the prop undisturbed without being deflected off of a, a V-bottom. And that makes it so a prop gets a lot more uh, firm blast of water, gets the boat up on plane quicker, makes the boat perform better and go faster. I want to spend just a quick minute on the Lund cover because it is a really, really, really cool cover that is unique. Rather than having like a traditional strap down to the trailer or a bunch of snaps in the boat, Lund's patented this little design that has clips that clip into the sport track on the outside of the boat. Um, so it makes it so that this pr cover process is real quick and easy. You're not getting snaps that rust off or you have to mess with that the cover stretches out. Actually, the, you can put the cover on and they'll actually kind of move itself and slide it around. And they have cool features like having the cleat pockets as well. So if you didn't need to tie it up to a dock, you can do that really easily and hook up your cleat with the rope. Trailers are brand new this year, so Lund added, rather than having your traditional painted steel, it actually has what they call Lund Guard coated on it, so it's a little bit tougher, more durable material. Um, they dress it up a little bit with a cool little uh, chrome logo. Um, all the Adventure Series will come with a swing away tongue, and at Buckeye we equip them with spare tires and side load guides to make it really easy to get the boat on and off the trailer with minimal effort. The first model we're going to talk about is the 1675 Adventure. This is available three different ways. A tiller style, a uh, single console, which is the boat we're in today, um, as well as the walkthrough windshield, which is the one over here that we'll talk about a little later. So the Adventure Series replaces the Rebel. The Rebel has been in the Lund line for many, many years. It was called the 1625 Rebel XS, then it was the 1650 Rebel XS. Now we've gotten a little bit bigger, a little bit wider, a little bit longer, and now they've upgraded it now to a full new boat called the Adventure. So a few differences you're going to find between the Rebel and the Adventure we'll go through right now. Um, one of the things is the gunnel got a little bit wider and a little bit beefier um, so as the boat got bigger and longer. This particular boat is 16 feet 10 inches in length um, so it's really approaching a 17 foot size for boat. We'll work our way from the front of the boat back. You've got pre-wiring for a bow mount trolling motor. Very easy to go up to 24 volts on this unit. Here at Buckeye we usually do not pigeonhole you into any specific trolling motor or fish finder. We have recommended packages we can throw on here at a good value price or you can get the fanciest stuff that's out there. So we kind of leave that up to you on the trolling motor and the fish finder to select whatever you like. A couple things as we move back here, just a ton of storage in the bow of this boat. Two large storage compartments, much bigger than the prior model. Probably the coolest feature is the new center rod storage, which they had a modified version of it in the Rebel that held five rods. This new one actually holds 10, and you can go up to seven foot six inches for the rods. Also, there's a spot to 
put your trolling motor batteries up in the bow to move some of that weight forward and plenty enough room to mount a charger plus a couple batteries for a trolling motor up here. So as we move into the cockpit of the 1675 Adventure, the first thing that I notice is how wide it feels. And part of it's because the boat is wider, but it's only you know a few inches wider than the old model. But by taking away the full length or the full width rod locker on the side, now they're able to open this up and put you know quite a bit of little cubby storage compartments. So it really opens up the um, the cockpit so to make it, the boat feel quite a bit wider. So as you look around the boat. There's all kinds of little spots to put wallets or keys or fenders or ropes or lines or fishing gear where you don't have to have it locked into a compartment. So there's like six or seven little cubby storages to put your stuff. So as we move to the console, um, I'm a you know six foot two bigger guy. Um, I've got plenty of space at the console here. There's a, a plenty of space on the dash to put you know, a pretty decent sized fish finder unit. You can mount it flush or put it on a ram mount. Um, one of the other features that they did, which I really liked, is that they recessed the control box. A lot of times the control box is kind of up here, I'm hitting my knee with it or something along those lines, but this one they actually recessed into the side of the boat and it's really comfortable positioning where it's out of the way of my leg and I'm not ever gonna hit it on my leg, which is really, really cool. So one of the new advantages of the Adventure Series is as Lund keeps adding things and making boats better, is that they've distributed a lot of the weight of the boat forward. So your trolling motor batteries and your fuel tank have been shifted a little bit forward. So this boat actually gets a, it's under the floor, but it's a 20, 20, uh, 21 gallon fuel tank. And by having the trolling motor batteries and the fuel tank shifted forward, it makes it so the boat doesn't have a lot of bow rise to get the boat up on plane quicker and easier. Um, Another cool feature as we move to the rear of the boat is we've got the fixed jump seats. So the jump seats can jump up if you need them to. Um, you're, you've got a little bit of storage for your main battery underneath this side, as well as a little bit of ec extra storage. If we flip the deck down, you have a nice casting platform, pretty decent size. The ladder of the boat's hidden underneath this rear deck, so it's out of the way. You're not gonna trip over it or get in the, have it get in the way. The also the live well is a pretty good size, 23 gallons. It actually goes in and underneath that side, so it's a pretty good sized live well for this size boat. It actually will move underneath there. So one of the more popular questions people ask is, well, what, what do I get when I jump up to the bigger boat? And Lund, for manufacturing purposes, keeps it pretty simple. So the front deck size is exactly the same. This rear deck size is exactly the same. So on the 1775, which is a foot longer boat, the foot comes into play in the cockpit area. So that's where you're gonna see the, the difference. And of course, it's higher horsepower rated, that type of stuff, but pretty much it's the cockpit size. It's what you get. As we move into the adventure sport, I want to talk about another couple cool features that Lund offers. If we look at the transom of the boat, you can't see this, but it's underneath. You know, traditionally, boats have always had wood plywood transoms. Um, Lund started doing composite transoms, um, which obviously will, you know, stand the test of time a lot better. Uh, they did a lot of testing on it, and uh, you know that's a, a big improvement for you know from the older models of boats. Um, another thing that you'll find in all the adventure series is courtesy lights around the different sections of the boat, a couple different spots, you'll have courtesy rope lights, which is a, a cool feature for nighttime. Another fishing feature I really like um, on the adventure series, and this is on all the models, when I'm, you know, fishability is always a big part of what Lund does and they really think things through. So if I'm fishing off the side of this boat, I can put my feet kind of underneath and kind of lean my legs up against the side and um, it's not an awkward position. And if I'm casting or trying to reel in a fish, I've got all this extra space for my feet underneath the gunnel and I can put my legs up against it and it just really feels comfortable and it you know, feels like I'm in control and I'm not gonna fall over. So you know, rather than having some ramp sideways or some awkward other movement, they really thought about the fishability of the boat and how people are gonna use it. So we're in the 1675 Adventure Sport. And this one, the Sport indicates it's gonna have the full windshield for protection. Uh, this boat I also envision being a little bit more of a multi-sport boat, meaning not just a fishing boat, but maybe a little bit of family use as well. You know, between the jump seats 
and the optional ski tow bar that we see here. Um, and on this particular one, we upgraded to the 90 horsepower. So this boat will get pushed up into the 40, 40 to 45 mile an hour range. So plenty of speed to do tubing or light skiing or anything you want. Um, so that's another kind of cool thing. This one also will come with, and you can see it under here, which differs from the side console version. This is what they call the hider. So this boat comes with a bimini top, which isn't shown here, but if I move this piece out, the bimini top actually folds itself up and slides in here to store. So it's not always awkwardly on the back deck of the boat or somewhere like that. It's, there's actually got a storage compartment for the bimini top. So that's kind of a cool feature. The Bimini, their sport top, I guess I should call it, is, is the feature that it comes down and attaches to the windshield to give you protection in weather or protection from the sun. So now we moved into the 1775 Adventure. And as we talked about earlier, the difference is gonna be the size in the cockpit here. So we've got, actually got a spot for another row of seats. So if you wanted to take six people out and have them ride behind the windshield, you can make that happen. Um, obviously this is a side console model, but it's also available in the full walkthrough windshield as well. So performance options on these boats, the 1675 is rated up to a 90 horsepower. The majority of the ones we sell will probably sell a 60 horsepower. You can expect speeds up to the low 30s with, again, not a, not a huge bow rise, pretty quick planing boat. So low 30s with a 60. You put a 90 on the back, which you absolutely can do. You're probably looking into the 40s mile an hour range, low 40s. Um, the 1775, most of those are gonna go out with a 90 horsepower. Um, and then you, again, you can expect speeds, speeds in the upper 30s, low 40s on the 1775. You can jump up to the 115 on the 1775 and definitely get up into the low to mid 40s. Uh, but most people are you know, happy with the 90 horsepower um, on the 1775. Thanks for joining us today to talk about the Lund Adventure Series. In recap, we talked about the IPS haul and the uniqueness of that with a Lund boat. Um, also, a couple things, you know, is an upgrade or new features on the Adventure Series versus the Rebel Series that it replaced, is we've got wider gunnels, we've got included courtesy lighting, we've got the really nice 10 rod center rod storage, we've got additional storage throughout the boat with the bow storage as well as all the cubby storage around. Um, we've got the ability to put a ski pylon and a top hider on the boat as well. Um, and just overall, bigger boat, deeper, bigger cockpit space, um, you know, more width to the boat. So just, just a, a great package that Lund put together and really, really excited to get started selling them and getting, having people enjoy them. Uh, again, thanks from Buckeye Sports Center. You can check out our inventory at BuckeyeSportsCenter.com. If you have any questions about uh, the Lund Adventure Series or any Lund boat, uh, let us know. Thank you.